Hi everyone and welcome to another review by Thinkathema. I'm Amy, this is my partner Maggie Hello. and today we are reviewing Maglev Metro by Ted Allspat and this copy has been provided by Bezier Games but as always we will give our honest opinions yeah. about how we felt about this game and all of the time that we've spent playing it. Yeah, so in Maglev Metro we are all building a magnetic levitation metro and what we're going to be doing is, well, we're either going to be doing that in Berlin or in Manhattan. And so there's going to be a whole different range of getting points ultimately to kind of demonstrate that you're going to be the most effective and efficient uh, metro coordinator or project manager. So we're going to be building uh, all sorts of different uh, tracks, connecting all these different stations. And then the main thing is picking up passengers and delivering them to the station that they belong to. Now, in order to show you what you need to get done in this game, we are demonstrating the Berlin board here. On the flip side of the board is um, Manhattan or the New York side of the board. It is the beginner side and the one that they recommend that you use, although there's not too many differences um, between the two. Now, this whole game is really about your player board. You are building out a shared um, well, maglev map, mm -hmm. um, but all of the things that you're going to be able to unlock happen on your player board. So the ultimate objective of this game really is to pick up passengers of all of these different colors and drop them off to the stations that match their color. When you do that, you get to keep the passenger and use it to unlock all of these abilities on your board. Now that can either be to make your basic actions are more powerful to allow you to get more done in one turn or to unlock scoring abilities or additional victory points that are going to help you of course at the end of the game. Now there are two main types of passengers in this game. The first are the regular commuter type passengers and they are in these four colors or four shades of pink and purple. <laughs> and in order to be able to pick those up and to drop them off to their stations and to build stations in their color, you're going to have to unlock them first on your board one meeple color at a time. The second type of passenger are robots and robots come in gold, silver and bronze. When you are able to pick up those types of robots and then deliver them to their stations, you're going to be able to fill in the center part of your board, which is actually the most important part in the game because this area is called units per action. At the beginning of the game, you have a very, very basic train. The train can only move between two stations, just move once. It can only pick up one passenger. It has capacity for one passenger. It can only drop off one passenger at a time. So in order to get anything done at the beginning of the game is really slow, really, really slow. You're moving around slowly, mm. picking up one thing at a time, dropping off one thing at a time. But the idea is that you collect these robots and you increase the power of each of these actions. So for example, uh, when you start the game, you can only pick up one person at a time. But if you can increase your capacity from one to two, and then um, your pickup from one to two, you'll be able to move around picking up more passengers and being more efficient generally. Now, the other thing about this game is that you start as a train with absolutely no track. And so of course, the first thing you need to get done is really to build out your network. And the way that you're going to be doing that is by using the build track action to lay these pieces of acrylic tile. And these are transparent, of course, which is really cool because it means that all of the players can go in the same space and you can still see where your train is able to go. So you have corner pieces and you have straight pieces. And what's interesting is that um, when you get halfway along your line, you're not able to turn around unless you've built this reverse train action, which can lead to some very like sticky situations where you're halfway along and you realize that you have to be completely inefficient, go to the end of your line in order to come all of the way back. Now, something really cool about this game is actually the economy of the passengers because you're going to be building out track, which means that sometimes you're the only person that can get to one of the stations. You might be there all alone, and that is an optimal time to refill the station with passengers. And what you're gonna be doing is drawing passengers out of the bag, and depending on how many refills you've unlocked, you'll be dropping that number of passengers onto the station, allowing you, of course, to then pick them up and take them where they need to go. 
But what's interesting about this is the bag gets filled with these different types of colored passengers as their stations get built. So if you're the first person to unlock this pink station and therefore be the only person that can build that station and pick up those passengers, those passengers are going to be added to the bag and every time that people draw out of the bag, it's highly likely that those pink ones are going to come out, which means that you're all of a sudden going to create this monopoly and people are going to want to then get in on the action by um, unlocking the pink passengers. On your turn, you're only allowed to take two actions, but on your player board, you're able to unlock additional actions. At the end of the game, each of the passengers on your board are going to score a different amount of points, which you can increase um, by unlocking part of this board to increase the value of each of the meeples. And you can also increase the value of each of your connections between stations, which is also going to score victory points at the end of the game. And finally, at the start of the game, you are given four different objective cards which relate to different things that you can get done in the game in order to get victory points. Um, at the end of the game, you're allowed to score one by default, but using your player board again, you can unlock additional cards to score at the end of the game. And at the end of the game, the person with the most victory points wins, just yes. like usual. <laughs> just like victory points in every sort of game. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the experience of this game. When we first got the box of it, I remember looking at it going, oh, trains, looking at the back going, oh, the artwork seems okay. When we and we don't actually really, we don't do a lot of pick up and deliver and no. we don't do a lot of kind of networky sort of building your connections between things type games. And we're not really train people. I think no. the only other train game that we have is Snowdonia, mm -hmm. which is, you're still building a track, but not quite like this. It's not like a network in the way that you're doing it here. And so I was actually really surprised when we kind of had our first play of it and go, well, even though it's trains, it's not something that I'm usually that intro into. Mm. Uh, it, it, made, it made sense. It's like, you're, you know, you're building your, you're building your track to get to those stations. You're picking up those passengers and taking them to their corresponding color. Mm -hmm. I found it really interesting how, yeah, like it, it kind of reminded me of a little bit of that, oh, that puzzly hit that I would get with the first few Euro games that I played, where I was like, oh yeah, I get what's going on and, I'm, I'm, and I kind of want to, it's simple enough to understand, mm. but it's tricky to kind of figure out how do I get the balance right? Mm. I do remember, for example, in my first, I, I don't think I've made the mistake again, but in my first game, I did make a mistake of ending without enough robot meeples to really make sure that I had a good engine to do mm. things. And so when everybody else around the table managed to get all those robots, and then I was like, I can't unlock the other, I can't unlock the other guys, which means that then I can't, yeah, I can't get meeples. And now I'm sort of having this very inefficient train that only just one does one thing at a time. So it was, yeah, yeah it, 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 it's sort of like, it was interesting that you could get really, it, you could get stuck. Yeah, but the thing that's so satisfying about this game is mm. that you start and you just can't do anything. Yeah, you, <laughs> you're all your hands are around. very much tied initially. Yeah, you're moving around at a snail's pace, but everybody is in the same boat and it's interesting and cool and satisfying the way you start to unlock things and mm. then it's like the world is opening up to you and you can focus on one thing. So if you focus on your ability to build track, then you're building your network out super fast yeah. and everybody else is like, oh, maybe I need to build track faster. Yeah. And it's that comparison of what other people are doing and unlocking mm. that really, you know, kind of creates the energy yeah. around the table. But at the beginning, it feels so slow. You're yeah. like, this is so inefficient. And your turns are over really quickly because yeah. you're like, well, I move one and I pick up one. Yeah. And then Done. that's that's yeah. your turn. But on the on the other hand, it's like it's good because it means that like even if you're playing with a lot of other players, it's mm. like done, done, done. Oh, it's my turn again. And that's one of the things that you'll hear a lot in this game. It's like, oh, my turn already. Oh, it's already my yeah, turn, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so it's not like, you know, painful waiting time as you're as you're playing. No. This. But I also really like that it's so intuitive to teach. Yes. This game I like I had we took it to a lot of different events and mm -hmm. um, we played it with family and friends and strangers and I thought what was really cool is yeah. just that um, it makes intuitive sense people yeah. understand pick up and deliver they understand to get the right passengers to the right areas mm -hmm. but this 
part of your player board where you are unlocking mm. the abilities and the way that that immediately impacts your turn. So mm. it's not like a long-term strategy where you're not sure how something's going to play out. Yeah. It's like this short-term tactical thing that you're moving that mm. just creates this like, ah, oh, now I can mm. move really far, really yeah. quickly. And you know that's really awesome. And you see their eyes light up and you see people like just wanting to experience this game I, like i really thought that was super powerful yeah i agree i think the tension as well between like when you know when you get to deliver you know one of your passengers and then you're like great where am i gonna put it on the board all of a sudden you're like okay so you have this these very difficult options in terms of you can either try and go for the shorter term of let me improve my game so try and unlock extra actions uh, or am I playing for the long term and kind of go oh, I want to make sure that I can score a couple of my mm -hmm. goal cards or am I just trying to like get those links uh, boosted you know and 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 this whole thing of, of having to unlock some of the different colors before you can actually pick those yeah. passengers yeah like that is very clever and it that, is clever and it does yeah. create so much tension because mm. either you're making your training your network really powerful yeah and you are forgetting to unlock the <laughs> types of passengers the if you do that the game can get away from you really quickly yeah. because all of a sudden everyone else is picking up all of the different color passengers that yeah. you haven't unlocked um, but also understanding the point in the game where you need to swap from engine building mm. to point gathering yeah. is is really clever yeah. as well because all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I really should be focusing on my end game objectives and what do I need to get done and yeah. have I unlocked enough of these things mm. that are going to give me more victory points? Yeah. And that is usually done at the expense of extra actions mm. or changing your actions yeah and so I, I think that makes for a really great puzzle one thing i didn't talk about in the teach because it's um, a little bit more difficult to explain but the robots that uh, fill the center part of your board generally speaking can also be moved around throughout the game using the adjust action mm. and so that is a strategy in and of itself because you know at the start of the game you might want to power up that you can build lots of track your mm. track action but then later in the game you might want to shift those robots to you know really stack a different action mm. to allow you to get something done later in the game yeah. and that in and of itself is a really fun puzzle as well yeah. you, you kind of you're a bit like head down trying to optimize your player board, but at the same time, it is really important to watch what everyone else is doing. I agree. Because yeah. people can steal your passengers. All the time, and it happens all the time. That someone will be like, oh, I'm not going to refill that station because you're just going to come over and take them. And like, yeah, and you are constantly doing yeah. the math of can Maggie get over to mm. my station and pick up those passengers and take them before I get an opportunity to pick yeah. them up. So that is, I would say though, the interaction is fairly mild in this game. Yeah. That's probably the only point of interaction yeah. is just, you know, people filling the stations up to places where you can't reach, which is super <laughs> annoying. Um, or people, um, yes, coming in, swooping in and it's, stealing your yeah, passengers. And I'd probably say that that's probably the main thing, the, the stealing passengers that you, you know, that you kind of wanted. Which, again, if you're the only person that has unlocked a particular color, then they're safe. Because, you know, if they're being, uh, if those passengers are there, you're the only one. But it doesn't really take that long. Even if there's the stations that you can't reach, it doesn't really take, in one turn, you usually, any player can usually reach, like extend mm. their track to reach. Um, so, so yeah, I find, and even even with the different colored meeples, it's very rare that you'll have a whole game where no one has access to them because people kind of clue into it and go, not yeah. very quickly catch up. And yeah. I just love that uh, the economy aspect of the game mm. is just so clever in that the the meeples in this bag are going to be only the colors that people have unlocked. Yes. And so even if the first color is unlocked and you're adding in the second, what you're doing by adding in that second color that maybe you're the only person that can reach is you are kind of watering down yeah. the bag for their own meeples that they're trying to get, yeah. which means that you've got more opportunity to to have those drawn out of the bag. Um, and I just, I think that's really, really clever. Yeah. And it makes you think in the game about like, okay, well now if I'm drawing out of the bag, I'm probably most likely to pull out all these mm. colors that I haven't unlocked. So I really need to focus on unlocking. Yeah. The other thing is like the, this mental, like for me, particularly in the later games, this sort of mental maths of, okay, where am I going to more planning in terms of where am I going to put these stations? Am I potentially going to be focusing on only a couple of colors? In which case I want to make sure that I'm not going to be having to pick up over here and then deliver all the way at the other side. 
uh, end of the map. So that came into play. Um, the other thing is this this concept of you know when you're drawing when you're refilling a station and you're drawing out of the bag. If you pick up a, a passenger that's the same color, that has to go back in the bag. Same so color as the station. The same that color as the station. Yeah. yeah, because it technically already arrived at their destination, so you wouldn't like you wouldn't have them there to pick up and deliver. So the this other element of kind of positioning yourself, going okay, I know that I'm I'm kind of vying for this particular color. I'm going to position myself here where I know that I'm going to be close to be able to deliver them, and here it's going to be safe. Like for example, if I'm at a gray station, it's going to be safe, and I want the um, the little pink ones. Um, then I can go great. I can try and get those ones there. So I, I did find that it's one of those games where you definitely the strategy evolves, and there's uh, there's many different ways to dive into it every time that you play. Like even you've said, it's like oh, I'm going to try you know something different. Different this strategy. Time. I'm going yeah, track I love strong. That. I love going, that. Yeah, I really uh, enjoy that too. And I f I found this game. It's just. It's so easy to, to get started yes. in this game. So it's a great game to teach to, you know, those kind of mid-weight gamers who yes. would otherwise be overwhelmed by a really complex networking game. Because at the beginning, like, you're so hamstrung mm. that you can only do a few things anyway. And by the time they get that rhythm going mm. and their engine starts to build, it just becomes, like, really fast, really quickly yes. th throughout the like, later parts of the game. And just when you've got your engine running beautifully and you've unlocked so mm. much stuff the game ends because yeah. the game ends when the last passenger is drawn out of the bag yeah. and it comes around quite suddenly yeah. at the end I'd say it's great because it's got that it's yeah you can teach it to someone who's like a you know not really gamer or medium level gamer but it's entirely satisfying to mm. for a heavy gamer yeah. we even had with a, a new friend that we made we had a, an almost or potentially a gateway moment where at the end as, as he was playing like this was the first kind of board game like hobby board game that he played and as he was playing it's like you could see the glint in his eye going what is this yeah. like this is amazing and then he's like i'm gonna get a copy of this and i'm just gonna play it at home and figure out the strategy and we're like yeah <laughs> yeah we, we're like we got, we got him. him yeah we, we got, got him. him it's like have we yeah. got a, a library of things to show you a whole <laughs> new world so yeah. that that was really cool to experience yeah to recruit a new gamer yeah. through this game yeah um another thing about this game that really draws you in is the appearance of mm. it. It is really well made and a lot of thought was put into the componentry in that it's all really premium. So the station tiles are really, Super really thick, thick. cardboard. Yeah. There are these giant pieces of cardboard. The player boards are all double layered mm. and the board itself is double layered. So where you need to put the stations, yeah. um, you can just kind of slot them in. And then of course the acrylic tiles, which yeah. do have that lovely effect of creating a network work um and your little train there's also the physical mm -hmm. train so the trains are really awesome and they yeah. do fit the meeples in so they can stand up when you're moving them around yeah um in practice yeah they are a bit fiddly but you know i forgive that because i love the fact that they do carry yeah. your passengers yeah, and yeah. once they're on your train no one can get them so it feels like this little <laughs> safe little place for yeah. your train um to, for your passengers uh, but we often found that if you had one passenger, it would just like fall over and yeah. end up in the train. And then we started referring to it as the hearse or the coffin. The coffin, um, yeah. With one passenger lying in it. Yeah. Um, but they, they have a good weighty feel, yeah. these trains, yeah, that's, um, that's which fine. is really nice. Yeah. But we did have a couple of issues kind of with the component tree. They're really little things. And I would say that overall, I appreciate the effort that yeah. went into making this feel premium. I'd mm. much rather have it the way it is yes. than to compromise and make anything like regular flat yeah, just cardboard. Flat that, it yeah, just wouldn't be yeah. as exciting and it wouldn't have the table presence. But there's a few little things. So one is like these acrylic tiles, they do like slot in between stations and sometimes the fit is a bit tight and they don't mm. always click into you place. You end up with this sort of like, it, particularly if you have two of the cardboard stations, sometimes the, the stations themselves won't fit in yeah. properly. You kind of have yeah. to jiggle the, them Some of these are quite bit. tight, these fit. Yeah. They're yeah. starting to wear a bit. Mm. Um, the other thing is about wear and tear. I feel like the board, yeah. it's in four pieces and the places where they connect, it's starting to peel up a little yes. bit. And, you know, we've been playing it a little bit, but not enough that I would want 
you know, the color to start coming off around the edges. Mm. Um, so that is a little bit sad and annoying. Yeah. Um, the player boards themselves, I've heard that some of them um, have been quite warped. Ours are not too bad. They're yeah. quite flat. Again, it's the trade-off of having these mm. beautiful double layered boards and I'd still rather have it this way, even though even the meeples are quite Sometimes difficult. Sometimes don't qu- they don't quite fit. So it's it's like, a, oh, so close. So close. So close. And I agree with you. I totally would, would prefer this to having something was just completely flat and not even yeah. trying. But it is like, oh, it's just it's just kind of like, oh, disappointing because it's just like, it's so mm. close. Like so much of it is so close. Yeah, so perfect. Mm. And there are a couple of other little niggles as well. One is the color choice. Yes. It's very curious. I enjoy that they went with the pinks and the purples because you don't see that as often in games. Yep. And so I really appreciate the interesting colors that are different to the train colors. They're cool for the stations and for the passengers. Mm. But it's dark purple and light purple and really a dark mm. pink and a light pink. And at a glance, it's quite hard to tell which type of passenger yeah. you're picking up. And the robots. The yeah, robots the bronze are... and the gold. Sometimes the bronze and the, the light as well. Like you kind of have to go, is this gold? Is this bronze? Because they can yeah. look very similar. They look yeah. incredibly similar. Yeah. And to the point where often you have to hold it up against, like I have <laughs> yeah. to do it against my player board to tell whether it's the gold or the mm. bronze. I know a lot of people are going to have trouble with that. We don't have any like color blind, like friends um, or family, but I know that some of these colors mm. are probably going to be a bit um, difficult yes, um, to differentiate. Like yeah, we, and even without we find color it, blinders, yeah, we find yeah. it difficult. And um, yeah, and it also then depends on what lighting you're using. And yeah, so that's another. Little and kind again, of... the passenger meeples that that um, the robots that are gold, silver, and bronze, they have like a metallic look to them. So mm. I can see what they were trying to do. Yes. And it's just unfortunate that it does create a little bit of mm. like yeah. confusion where there doesn't need to be confusion. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that is an unfortunate part about the game. And my only other criticism is the rule book. I did feel as though this is quite a simple game to teach. Mm. So much so that that's one of my favorite elements of this game. Mm. I can get it to the table and it's a quite a crunchy game that I can teach really quickly and in a crowded environment. We've yeah. taken this to a game day yeah. and it was just so easy to get onto the table. Mm. But that rule book made it so much more difficult yeah, than it most, needed to be. <laughs> it's user friendly. It's, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's on black and it's got white text and then it just doesn't have... It, they I just haven't leveraged like dot points and calling out the main things with examples um, very well, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a bit more difficult than it needed to be, but it's worth the investment. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely think... Yeah. Sorry, you were going to say something? No, I was going to say, should we talk about player counts, but you finish. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I was just mm. going to say that overall, I really enjoyed this game. Mm. Yeah, um, If you can't tell already, it is um, a game that we will keep in our collection. Absolutely, um, yes. And for me, the main occasion for this game is a group of mixed gamers because... Mm-hmm. I feel as though anyone who's like the newest person to the hobby who'd played chess before and nothing else um, really loved this game and it was easy to teach him this as well as our gamers who are really, really experienced Mm -hmm. still love the puzzle of this player board. Mm. Um, And so for that reason, it is definitely going to stay in our collection. I really enjoyed it. Um, In terms of player count, Mm -hmm. we played it a lot at... um, Four. Four, yeah. At four. And I really like it at four. It can run a little bit long. A little long, if yes. Your, if your friends are prone to analysis paralysis. Mm, uh, yeah. Because the, the, the turns can move really quickly. But in those first few games with an, someone who's new to the game, yeah. Um, it yeah, you can kind of come to a standstill while someone's mm. just trying to decide where to put that meeple yeah. on their board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comes around to them very quickly and they're like, I'm still I'm still trying to put this on my board. Yeah, deciding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but... We also played it um, at two. And two was very quick. Yeah, yeah, two is really fast. Mm. And I really enjoyed that because it was almost like Maggie's just action one, action two. And then I was like action one, action two. Yeah. And it just moves so smoothly. And then it feels more like a race. Like it yeah. felt like an intense race then because we were both trying to unlock different colors to each other mm. and get things done. Yeah. I probably wouldn't pull it out as like my game of choice for the two of no, us, I only agree. the two of us. And, and I think it's because, again, like I would place this as something that is satisfying for a heavy gamer to play. But it's not, it wouldn't be my, if, like, if I want to play a complex sort of like mental mm. kind of put my mind to a bit of a workout. It's like, this is fun but i actually would prefer to play this with like newer gamers mm. or people that are like you know yeah in a con or whatever yeah um then i would like if it's just the two of us it's like mm-hmm. i'll either get try and get something much heavier 
um, or something. Yeah, but yeah. I, I for bang for buck in terms of the teeth, Absolutely. I really think yeah. it's great because yeah. it's just one that will sit on the shelf and you just be like, well, do you want to learn Maglev Metro? I yeah. can teach you that. Yeah. <laughs> like and, straight and again, away. I feel like that. it encapsulates that little hit of like, a, oh yeah, that Euro kind of, oh, what is this hobby yeah. board gaming Because thing you can go. make a series yeah. of unfortunate decisions that really leave you left behind. And that's probably the warning as well. Like you mm. can really, like it, it, that's probably where it's, it's can be punishing in terms of like, if you play a few things really, really wrong, which I have done, then it can be a potentially frustrating experience during the game. But I don't think... then you're like, oh, no, I can't get those robots. During the game, yes. But I think that's the thing that Mm. sparks that next time I'm going to do this all differently. And that's why people get excited when they play the game because they're like, oh, I didn't win. Mm. But if I'd only unlocked this... You can see what you did wrong. You can see where things sort of went, yeah, Mm. pear-shaped. Yeah, Yeah. and so you played it solo I did play it solo. (laughs) It's incredible incredibly fast solo it's a very i love when it's a simple implementation of a solo there's no ai to work out kind of reminded me a little bit of mage knight and that all you're really doing is at the start of every turn you're just drawing out one of the the meeples from the bag which is obviously kind of the timers running down the timer uh and then you're just playing your game the same way that you would the only other different oh well it, it also has um, some of your objective cards, which are different links between um, links between stations, you would draw out two of those, and so you're not allowed to connect those two sets of stations oh, at cool. any point in the game. So, which again, it's sort of like it throws in a little added inconvenience mm. or something that you have to navigate or work around. But I found it it's super it's super fast because obviously you're just kind of pulling out one um, of those maples from the bag and then doing your own thing. But because of that. It's, it feels really brutal as well. Like it actually feels way more difficult also because at the end of the game, whatever your score is, you're going to minus every single meeple that you pulled out of the bag. So every turn that you took, so you're often going to be minusing 20 plus, or at least I have. <laughs> and so it's one of those games, again, where you like, I look at the at the score, the, the, the legend of if you're in this category, you're this type. And I go, how do you get over a hundred points in this? Like I can barely mm. crack 30 after you've taken all the other stuff. So it's again, one of those things where I'm like, it plays really quickly. It's the same kind of puzzle, but with this sort of added pressure of the timer sometimes you could actually run out of that timer before you get to even unlock any of these mm. other ones so you it really does put that pressure on you to be really efficient with with how you're how you're playing it i did find that you know even with all the different games that i had of it it was fast I could not figure out like how to get that many points. And it, it feels like a puzzle where I've only been able to crack maybe 5% of it. I think my highest score so far is like the shoe cleaner on the platform is the legend of like what? <laughs> what is there I, anything less than that? Oh yeah, there's a couple oh, more okay. like, less than that, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a from a solo implementation uh, point, it's very easy to play. You do get to kind of play around with all these different balances. It does feel different. It feels different to the multiplayer. Would I choose to play the solo or the multiplayer? I still prefer the multiplayer because even though it's a very, great kind of very simple, straightforward solo um, version, and it, it does feel like a different, a slightly different game because you kind of you're you're racing against your own clock, and and there's no one else taking or or adding things to the bag. And if you don't add them, like if you don't unlock that new station and you don't add them, mm-hmm. then they just sit there. Um, so I, yeah, I, again, it wouldn't be my, my preferred choice, but I would, yeah, if it's sitting there, I would play it solo. Yeah, like be, anytime. Because yeah. you don't really like an AI, so in that way. Yeah, so there's good. no AI, yeah. which, is, which is great. Hmm. But again, it, but also I think, and this is again like a per, where I am right now in my life, I'm really enjoying the more like narrative and thematically immersive mm. stuff. And this is still, it's a puzzle of trains and connections and networking. Mm. So it's like, if you're into lo- the logistics side, this is going to be great. It's not as convenient as some of the other solos because it is still like quite big. I did find like the the, the set reset mm-hmm. does take a little bit um, of time because you're kind of having to rearrange everything. Um, so it's not the quickest to kind of play again and again. But uh, the game itself, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Yeah. Hmm. So in summary, we would highly recommend this game. Mm. I think that it's a great one for all levels of gamer. It has great accessibility, but it's also a really interesting puzzle for Mm. the heavy gamer. Um, I would say in terms of replayability, you know, there's only two sides of the board here. And the puzzle is really 
kind of the same every time and you do get more efficient at it over time. I think the cards, the objective cards really add another layer to it because every time you might have slightly different cards which might guide your strategy in mm. some sense. Um, but I am looking forward to probably getting the expansions for this game which have just been announced from Bezier Games because I think that over time the puzzle might wane a mm. little bit. Yeah. But the real joy and the reason why we're keeping in it in the collection is because of that accessibility element. The replayability is not as much of a big deal because we mm. can introduce new players to it all the time, yeah. um, which is going to be the and fun element. And I feel like I'm still going to, as I said, like I feel like I've cracked seeing playing that solo and going, what? You can get so much <laughs> Sounds more Sounds like you've got some more games to There's go in There's definitely, the, in the even solo. with the same puzzle, it's like I have, I'm nowhere near cracking this puzzle. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the shoe cleaner of the platform. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you enjoyed this review, please hit like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll be back with more board game reviews soon, but bye for now. Bye.